Welcome to our digital special show, The Review. I'm Rudhima Patak and I have with me Brendan McCullum and the weather just got the better of us and the inevitable announcement is here. The match is abandoned. India and New Zealand share a point each. Who benefits out of that more? Well, look, I think both teams would be quietly happy with the result of that. I think when you turn up and you get conditions like this and they're overcast and there's been a lot of rain around leading into the game, there's never really any certainty around how the conditions will play. I think the toss becomes so important and it become a little bit of a, uh, I guess, a bit of a licorice all sorts of results. So I think both teams will end up walking away from this. They've, there's no injuries, which can obviously unfold as well when you play in wet conditions such as we were presented with today. Um, take their point, move on to the next game. Yes, but you know what, Brendan? I really feel for the fans who've come all the way here from across the world. It's it, My heart goes out to them. I just I want to punch the weather. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, and 100%, I guess that's one of the things in our sport is that, you know, sometimes it rains and the conditions become unplayable. It is really frustrating, um, but there's not much you can do about it. I've heard people talk about reserve days, etc., for this World Cup. Look, that's just not really going to happen. I think the World Cup needs to be inside a, a short period of time, and it's just the way that uh, the way that things happen sometimes. What it does mean is, with weather around and and what we've seen so far with all these rain out games, is if you get an opportunity in a game to be able to increase your run rate, um, because you're so far in front of the game, you've really got to push it home because run rate could be really. Really, really important as this um, tournament progresses. Right. Now that New Zealand and India share a point each, let's take a look at the standings, the table toppers, New Zealand. And let me tell you, New Zealand and India are the only two undefeated teams in the ICC Cricket World Cup so far. And that still holds true. If we take a look at that, with the seven points out there, with one point from today, New Zealand still maintain that top position. What do you make of those standings? It's, I think it's a lot affected by rain. And how do you think the World Cup will shape because of the weather? Well, I think firstly, I think New Zealand will be really pleased um, if they had a said to them at the start of the tournament after four games, you can have seven points. I think they would have said, where do we sign? So, you know, they were, uh, obviously this was going to be by far and away their hardest game of the tournament. Um, but to go through four games, get seven points in the bank, they now go into those other games. They probably need to win two of those to be able to qualify for the finals. So the destiny's in their hands. I think it's obviously frustrating for everyone who is a fan of this World Cup to see so many games rained out. But at the same time, it is part and parcel of it. There's still so many brilliant games to come. There's still a long way to go in this World Cup, and I'm sure we'll see some outstanding cricket. Right. Let's listen in to Matt Henry, how disappointed he was with the weather. He's here with Simon Dual. Oh, Matt Henry, and alongside me, Matt, uh, disappointment today, obviously, with the rain. Um, what was it like in the change room? What were the thoughts? Yeah, it's a bit of a shame we couldn't quite get out there. Um, it's been pretty uh, wet the last three or four days, so, uh, yeah, not ideal, and obviously a lot of mucking around goes on. What have you been doing in the last three or four days outside of training? <laughs> there hasn't been too much to do, to be honest. Um, kicked the football around in tours. Um, apart from that, a lot of coffee. Cards, dominoes, yeah. uh, playstations, anything? Yeah, there's been a lot of cards going on. Um, I think, obviously, Craig Mack gets quite uh, quite excited about those situations. But, yeah, just cards, really, and, and like I said, a bit of football and just, just mucking around, really. I saw James Neesham and Mitch Santner playing uh, a little bit of tennis with a couple of the ATP girls the other day. You didn't take your fancy uh, going down there and trying your luck? No, I think those two rate themselves in their tennis, so they were the first ones with their hands up. But um, yeah, it looked like a bit of fun. So Nisham obviously played a few shots you don't usually see too often. But um, you hit one over the offside. Yeah, he smoked one over the mid off, which uh, yeah, was remarkable stuff. So yeah, no, they looked like they had a good bit of fun. Outside of the cricket and things, I mean, if it's not tennis, what is it for you? What, do you, what else do you play? Um, oh, like I'll bit of play a bit of golf, but obviously the weather hasn't been great for that. So um, yeah, like I said, it's just been playing a bit of cards. Um, uh, a couple of the guys got the guitars on tour, just mucking around with them, and apart from that, uh, not much really. All right, you've got uh, five days, I think I'll make it, between now and uh, South Africa in Birmingham. Um, what are you looking forward to for that South Africa game? What do the boys have to work on with, with seven points in the bank now? It's a pretty good start. Yeah, I think I, I think we always look at each game one at a time, and I think obviously today was a challenge that we were looking forward to. Unfortunately, we couldn't get out there, but um, yeah, we'll take your point. You, know, you move on, and, and obviously South Africa is going to be another big challenge ahead, so we'll obviously get our prep done for that and um, yeah, look forward to it. Seven wickets in the first two, uh, missed out in the third game. How are you feeling personally? Yeah, the ball's coming out nicely, which is always good. So, um, but it's just been—I think it's nice as, as a bowling unit. I think we've all kind of come together and and um, and done our roles well, which is all you can really ask for. All right, mate. Thanks very much for joining us, and um, good luck in the next one in Birmingham. Mate. Cheers. Thanks very much. Sorry. Interesting. So, Brendan, tell me, how did you deal with rain days? 
Uh, well, it varied really. Um, I like to keep things pretty relaxed and um, you know just try and muck around the dressing room. You heard Matt Henry there talk about um, that there's a lot of football being played, a little bit of cards in the background. You're really just trying to occupy your time because at any stage the umpires could say, right, it's now time to go. So you wanted to make sure that you were pretty relaxed and and, uh, and just, just killing time really. Um, but look, both teams were really disappointed with today. I think they were desperate to play. But at the same time, it is one of those things they'll move on and they've both got big games coming up. Yep. Well, with that, one of our Indian players, most loved players, Yuvraj Singh, announced his retirement from international cricket. Now, during the break, I made the most use of the Shah and I went out to fans to know what they felt about this. Take a look. Yuvraj Singh is not only going to be remembered for his 11,778 international runs, 148 wickets and 402 matches, but he'll be remembered as a man who just never gave up. Yuvraj was the dynamic who brought the, uh, after Soro Gongoli, he brought the about that passion and uh, charisma into the game. Oh, he's the, he's the brilliant and yeah, we really love that uh, his six sixes. He has been the pillar of the Indian team for a long, long time. I like him as a hero. I mean, you know, look at the ups and downs that he had in his life and still he came out as a hero. I really love him as a person, as a cricketer, everything. He's an amazing player. He's very hardworking and how he came back after uh, battling cancer. Yeah. That was amazing. So he's, he's everyone's favorite. I love you, Yuvraj Singh. We're gonna miss you. Yuvi, 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 Yuvi. We are gonna miss you. Yuvi, Yuvi, we will miss you. We are gonna miss you and we love you, Yuvraj Singh. Well, it does look like there was a lot of sunshine there when I was talking to the fans, but that's not the truth. It was just the love for Yuvraj Singh that brought the sunshine out there for that moment. But how do you feel about this? Your memories of playing with Yuvraj Singh. Yeah, I played a lot of cricket against Yuvraj Singh and um, look, he was one of those guys who, what you heard from the fans there, he just never gave up. He obviously had challenges off the field um, with health and, and even the way he played on the field, he was often um, criticised because of the aggressive style that he played. But what he did is he, he, A, he never gave up, but he also changed the game in the blink of an eye and who can, who can forget the six sixes that he oh, was yeah. able to um, achieve in the sport and everything that he's done in the sport. He's a wonderful ambassador for the game, he's a wonderful ambassador for his country and I'm sure that he won't be lost to, uh, to the sport. He'll have a, 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 lot of, uh, a lot of roles to play in various aspects of the sport moving forward. So congratulations, Yuvraj, from all of us. And, um, yeah, I'm sure we'll catch up in time and good luck. Yeah, hope to see you soon, Yuvraj. I should also say that, isn't it? <laughs> well, now India takes on Pakistan, the most uh, awaited matchup that all our Indian fans and Pakistan fans are really waiting for. That's going to happen in Manchester. And New Zealand will take on South Africa in Birmingham. Are you waiting for India versus Pakistan? Well, I am waiting for that game. I think it's going to be a ripping game. And it's probably exactly the right timing for it for the tournament, too, to to really grab everyone and, uh, and lock them into what remains the second half of the tournament. So we all know what, uh, what those games can bring, how much it means to both countries, and I'm sure we're going to have an absolute cracker. And the New Zealand guys, well, they get a bit of a break now, so they'll probably digest what they've done so far in this tournament, and they'll look forward to Birmingham and uh, the South African game on the 19th. Yes, and South Africa hasn't won a game yet, and New Zealand hasn't lost. What do you think of that? <laughs> well, let's make sure it stays like that. <laughs> I think South Africa is a very dangerous side, but let's hope that the uh, the trend continues and New Zealand can grab another two points. As much as we all love seeing South Africa strong, and in this cir circumstance, I'm going to have to be a little biased. I'm sorry. Well, thank you so much, Brendan. Thanks a lot. And uh, catch all the updates, our news, our fixtures, our features on Adelaide ICC Cricket World Cup using the hashtag CWC19. Stay tuned.